Okay, I am back and I'm going to wait a few minutes here just for everything to catch up. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I apologize. I uh, just not the greatest when it comes to um, stuff like this. So I'm just going to wait a little bit here. Get this thing to re reload as well. Hi, everybody. I'm just letting everything reload. I'm hoping uh, people will just get back online. Uh, that would be awesome. So a couple people here. I'm just going to go back to my thing and um, I'm going to refresh my own page so I can see if there's any comments coming up. Uh, comments that I will be seeing are going to be a bit delayed, going to be a bit behind. And um, uh, Jamie, if you're there, um, you know, if you could comment just so I know you're here, uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, technical difficulties. Um, okay, yay, Jamie. Okay, so uh, we have time here now. Okay, cool. All right. Um, uh, you know, I apologize for everybody else that, that I've had this, uh, thing. I should have just went on here, but I thought, uh, I want to get better sound because here the sound is really poor on, on my old, uh, on my old computer and all that stuff. And I got to fix my, my hair so it doesn't look so in my eyes and all that stuff. Okay. Um, oops. it's reversed now. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not going to even worry about it. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to go back to this part here. Uh, 85 percent of the time, Daxon is best friends with our DM, uh, Wyatt, uh, with, with, with her, their double Merrill, your double Merrill, uh, Wyatt. They play together and they coexist in our home for the most part. Since Wyatt has turned nine to ten months of age, at times Daxon will growl at Wyatt when he gets close to him or if he's on the couch, on the bed, or on the floor sucking on a blanket. So when, um, as I was saying earlier, when, uh, when, when Daxon is sucking on the blanket and, and so forth like that, it's a dependency issue that he has. It's a dependency issue that uh, that Daxon has, and it's a codependency issue, which means that uh, it infers to me that uh, you had kind of a strong relationship with him, and you've always kind of maintained a strength with with Daxon, and it's too much for him now. So let me just go back to see if you made any other comments. Hi, Mary. Okay, technical difficulties. Okay, I am here. Okay, cool. So I'm going to switch back and forth every once in a while, and then catch up to any messages that you've left there, Jamie. Uh, okay, um, he's, okay, so uh, he'll growl with him if he's sucking on a blanket. He has even bit Wyatt a few times as Wyatt is getting older. He is at times will stand his ground and occasionally fight back. We have had approximately 10 heated dog fights between the two of them, all started by Daxton. If Wyatt is on the couch, bed, etc., first Daxton will join and lay him, lay on him, or lay next to him, I mean. But if Daxton is already there first, and Daxon being uh, the older dog, the Harlequin, um, was on the spot first, and Wyatt attempts to join him. He will growl, show his teeth, and at times snap at Wyatt. Daxon has no issues with our six-year-old lab, whom he, we have had since he was a puppy as well. So then your, your lab, uh, what's your lab's name? Okay, so just write down what your lab's name is. And I think I am probably 30 seconds behind on, on hearing anything that you're writing down. All right, so... Um, uh, Daxon as a puppy was well socialized, exposed to many situations, but not confident. He needed to be provided encouragement throughout situations. He was afraid of leaves blowing outside, new people at times, etc. In training class, Daxon was labeled reactive. He would freak out and resist if the trainer would try to take the leash from us to walk Daxon for recall exercises. Uh, when Daxon, uh, Jamie, when Daxon would uh, freak out and resist, would Daxon uh, attempt to bite the trainer or would he just basically just kind of bear that back and say, you can't pull me? That's a question that I have. Um, let me just see here. Let me see this other part here. Um, okay, I, I'm going to have to refresh this thing because I'm not getting any. Uh, I'm not seeing the. Um, I'm not seeing the comments coming up here as well. Okay, Winston. Well, Winston's the older dog's name. No biting. Okay, so he's just pulled back. He resists and all that stuff. All right. So. Um, one of the things I talk in one of my other uh, vlogs, right? And, you know, if you got 23, 24 hours to go through, and I'm not joking, it's like 24 hours already in just two weeks of, uh, two and a half weeks of uh, broadcasting here. Lots of information, a bit of a ramble, as you know, but um, there's a lot of information on what I'm talking, what I'm talking about that, uh, about leash aspects and, and behavior, etc. cetera. So um, let me just hear, uh, he jumped and pulled to get away back to you. Right, so then that means that the, uh, the trainer was a bit, uh, I would say the trainer's personality uh, was one that was overly confident, 
or too confident, which wasn't a real confidence that this trainer had, and that the trainer would basically kind of stand off sideways to the to uh, to to Daxon. A lot of times he was doing behavior, and he would sometimes look at Daxon and look away, and look back at Daxon and look away, and try to um, have that kind of communication where he was just like, oh, I'm just observing Daxon, and it's all cool, and all that stuff, and I, I know what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that that's the type of behavior that trainer was having, because um, you're describing the behavior that uh, Daxon is doing, which is going to be reflective of his behavior with the trainer. Obviously, the trainer himself has not spent time uh, with uh, with Daxon in the sense of just letting Daxon trust him. It wasn't happening. So you're not going to go with somebody if you don't trust, right? Someone says to you, hey, come, come and join me in my car for a drive, and they're a horrible driver. He's just like, no, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna stay here uh, and I'll, I'll hitchhike home. So um, we definitely want to be able to make an adjustment on that end for him. And okay, so what else do, do you say here? So um, it appears. Uh, well, okay, so Daxton is a puppy. Okay, number two. It appears Daxton is showing more anxiety and reactive behaviors as time goes on, especially with new people coming into our home and with kids. He was never a fan of kids other than the ones in our home. When he was six months of age, uh, if a child would try to pet or walk him, Daxon would, was not comfortable and he would growl at them. So it kind of goes back to what I said about the little brother, right? Daxon has just been forced to kind of grow up a little too fast. And when he was forced to grow up a little too fast, he, was, he ended up having to do things that he didn't want to do, he wasn't comfortable with. And it was a little bit too much of a pull for him. Um, you know, it looked too much for him. He, he wanted to be a bit more like, hey, I don't want to have to take care of everybody now, but I am because my humans aren't doing so, which kind of goes back to what you're saying about his behavior and the dog's behaviors in general with, uh, with your uh, fiance, Chuck. Uh, he would growl, okay, we often have my 10 and 13 year old kids, friends over in our home in the past six months. Daxon has attempted to lunge and bite at the 13 year old who asked to pet our dogs while we were taking a walk in our neighborhood. I'm not sure what the context is, but I would say more than anything else is Daxon just really is just had too many responsibilities that were put on him tacitly. So again, he didn't feel like he was being protected by his family, uh, by his humans. That's why he has the affinity over to your fiance primarily. And he follows your fiance all over the place because your fiance is going to be the kind of guy who's pretty chill. And, and you can tell that your fiance has got a bit of a high above average intelligence. Don't let him hear me say that because then he'll use it. Oh, look, at even James said I'm smart. Um, so you want to keep your husband down. Suppress the man. And um, so, so it's going to be the part where your husband probably has that type of behavior, right? that type of confidence and chillness about him where – People like your husband, not just because you're in love with him, but other people like him as in like, your husband's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, you know, I thought he was kind of a jerk, but he's actually a nice guy. That kind of behavior of your husband. So, of course, dogs are going to be attracted to that when there's so much uh, movement going on in the house where there is that much of you uh, not having a consistency. And statistically speaking, 72.1% of women in the household take care of the, the pets, takes care of the dogs. Okay, so, yeah, well, there you go. All right, so, okay, so I haven't met your husband before, anything like that. If I get a ticket, I'm asking him first for help, but I uh, like a speeding ticket. Um, but so there you go, right? So he's a chill kind of guy. He knows what he's talking about, above average intelligence and all that stuff. Again, please don't throw me in between your marital fights now. <laughs> don't, don't bring me in. He, I mean, your husband's going to be like, yahoo! Uh, but, okay, so there's that. So what's happening, essentially, uh, uh, let me switch back to Daxon. It's just, he was cool of being the boss and all stuff, and he expected to have some reciprocal respect back from everybody else, but he turned out to be that Daxon is the little brother that has been forced to become the sheriff, so to speak then, okay? That your, 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 your little boy, Daxon, your son, is like, it's too much now. I just want to be a dog. I don't want to have to make the decisions. I don't want to have to make sure everything's good. I don't want to have to make sure that no one's getting hurt anymore. You, my parents, should be doing it. You, my parents, should be stopping this dog from doing that and this kid from doing that and doing all that stuff. I want to get off the clock. I don't want to be on the clock anymore. I don't want to have to be paying and paying. I don't have to be the boss anymore. I don't have to be in charge. I don't want to be the big brother, the dad. I just want to be the little brother, the real little brother that gets all the affection and so forth like that. Okay? 
Uh, he bit a one-year-old ch- uh, when he was visiting with his family. There were lots of kids who Daxing did not know running around in our home at the time. Most recently, he bit a familiar ten-year-old uh, neighbor's boy. This boy is away at uh, is away. This boy is always at our house as he entered our home after ringing the doorbell. So again, you know, Daxon's like just a bit overwhelmed. He he he's he doesn't know if you guys are going to protect the household. Whether or not the traffic is back and forth, he doesn't see these kids, these people transit through and transient in your home. And this is talking about another person, uh, I think I'm actually uh, Leslie in uh, Peace, Love, Danes or Great Dane Fever 101, where I did a a group PM with them, the same part in that part, uh, Lindsay, if you're there, um, Lindsay, sorry, not Leslie. Um, if, If you're there, then you understand what I'm talking about. Too many kids, too many things happening. And uh, poor Daxon is like, nobody's doing their job anymore. Nobody's taking care of the front door. Nobody's checking, nobody's, no doorman. There's no door person there anymore. So you basically have to make sure when you're stepping in, because obviously if your husband's not there to be, you know, keeping the, keeping everyone calm, then you have to kind of step in and say, okay, you're allowed in. Don't let the kids run around. If they start running around and all that stuff, you have to provide proof of supervision to Dax and in the sense of Dax and you don't need to yell at these guys. You don't have to bark at them anymore. You don't have to be lunging at them anymore. I got it. Stop Dax and I've got it. It's okay. I'm the sheriff in town. Ask your, uh, ask your husband for one of those free badges that, um, you know, that they give to the kids. You can wear it yourself now. You'd be like, I'm the sheriff. Um, so basically uh, you have to step in. So when the kids coming in and start running even a little bit, I know it's going to be tough because they're kids. Slow down. And then you look at Daxon. Good boy, Daxon. Because Daxon's going to be like, ah. And then you want to acknowledge Daxon's behavior as well by saying, Daxon, I have it. I've got it. You don't have to worry about it. I've got it. Okay. Um, a bit of a more uh, The doorbell. Yeah, okay, there you go. The doorbell is a huge trigger for Daxon. We do our best to anticipate and stop the behavior to prevent these situations to keep both Daxon and others safe. Uh, one of the things you can do, of course, if you need to, you can always put Daxon away in a room put them with uh, Wyatt and put them with uh, Winston as well. So that way they don't all think they're in trouble singularly. They all think they're just like, okay, we have to go in the room or X out in the room. But if you put one away, then they're going to be like, okay, what did I do wrong? In the sense of, well, why the other two dogs are, because they're expecting you to put the other dogs together with them. It's just that natural behavior. They're like, well, why am I ostracized? Another way to practice that is to, when you're at home, just putting one of the dogs away by themselves while you're home and just saying, Daxton, and then they know, oh, why am I in here? Might create some anxiety in, in him, so you want to kind of visit him and let him in and out um, over a short period of time, a couple minutes, and then longer and longer and longer and longer, right? So that'll just get him acclimated to uh, being put in the room by himself. But again, if you can, uh, preferably if you can put them together, uh, then they don't feel like they're all in trouble, uh, singularly in trouble as an individual. So you want to kind of... Um, yeah, yeah, there we go. So, um, well, if you want to help him how to be just a dog, you got to stop letting him be in control or in charge of being the sheriff or being the little brother that's trying to be the big brother to everybody and keep him control. Because I think what ends up happening is for you is that when things get really out of hand, you tend to read the riot act out loud in a very large, long, harsh tone of voice. And it's a voice that you don't normally do, which makes Daxon worried that Daxon screwed up and didn't take care of everybody. And so now everyone's in trouble and Daxon having that type of personality that he has feels bad. And then Daxon tries harder the next time and his anxiety picks up and 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 picks up. It's not trigger stacking. It's just his anxiety picks up because it's different aspects of, of uh, consequential uh, behavior. Um, all right. Uh, we do our best to anticipate and stop the behaviors to prevent these situations to keep both Daxon and others safe in the county where we live in. Okay, we're going to go past that part. Uh, number three, Daxon is a jealous dog. All right, and you read my, uh, my blog in regards to jealous dogs, thank you, uh, which we felt fit Daxon to a T. And that's an envy, it's a codependency, it's insecurity, it's a position in the pack, right? I'm number six in my family of eight children. I have brothers and sisters, eight of us. I'm number six. I know I'm below five and I'm above two. So one, two, three, four, five, James, seven, eight. I know where I am. 
uh, the aspect of the uh, being secure. There's a way to address the dog when they have the codependency and the jealousy out there when the other dog's coming in. There's a way to help on that part. Um, just by acknowledging and talking to them on an occasional basis. So uh, um, if on one of the other uh, one of the other two dogs is getting attention, Daxon will make his way to push the others aside so he gets pet. Trust me, all three dogs are spoiled and get plenty of attention from us. Limit time of attention and limit the attention to seniority. And I have a, a, a vlog about seniority that I'll, I'll, I'll go through this. Like I say, it takes me two to three times longer than my vlogs. And I have three different vlogs to go through today. Um, but I'll put the link for that particular one about seniority. Winston, Daxton, and then, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, uh, Wyatt. Winston, Daxton, and Wyatt. Seniority. You're going to give attention, you're going to give attention to Winston, then it's going to be Daxton, then it's going to be White. You see a big difference when that happens. Seniority. We all know our seniority. We, 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 the jobs that we work with, we all know our seniority at our job. We know who was before us who got hired, and we know who got hired after us. And the person who got hired after us gets moved up the ladder if you're in a union. The person behind us got moved up in the ladder. You're like, mm, that's not cool. I was here first. If it's for just the same type of job that you could do, you like, that's not cool. Why, why is this person getting ahead of me when I was here first? Right? You see that in children. Children behave that way. Me first, me, me, me. And you're like, no, honey, it's, this, this girl was here first. You have to wait your turn. Same thing in that part of having Daxon. And when you start identifying delineating positions in the home, seniority in the home, not pack. Uh, alpha and all that stuff. It's not that structure. It's not that hierarchy. It, it is an aspect of just acknowledging them just like you do with your, your four children, I think you have. <laughs> they know where they are in the whole family. So the same thing. When the dogs go outside and go pee, same thing. Uh, it's not a seniority basis. It's a seniority when they go running outside, and then it's the basis of whoever goes pee first. And then I do the seniority on that part. That is a, what I call an in-motion training where things are already happening. We're just taking advantage of those basic behaviors so we're not trying hard and then it's it's not osmosis is actually what we do in our everyday life with our own humanity so we're doing that oh there's a mosquito here um that's what we do here at all times so we want to do that with the dogs they pick up on it and they're picking up on it in one tenth of a second so uh if you are worrying about the petting you're going to have to address him one at a time right you're gonna have to oh my gosh it's, 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 it's mosquito central now um you want to address them one at a time in basis seniority. So when he gets jealous and he gets envious and Daxon goes and he comes in and he tries to go through, through that, you say, no, Daxon, it's Winston. And then you spend 10 seconds or five seconds, whatever amount of time you spend with Winston, you spend with Daxton. Whatever amount of time you spend with Daxton and Winston, you spend with Wyatt. When you start to play with Daxton, after, you know, like Winston's get uh, Wyatt, Winston, Winston, the lab, Winston has his time, then it's Daxon's turn, and then you go to, right, so when da Winston, uh, sorry, uh, when Daxon tries to come in on Winston, no Daxton, it's Winston's turn, and then you do five seconds again, you start five seconds at the top again, and he's like, oh shoot, not again, then he will learn, it'll take a while, because you're trying to reverse two and a half years of behavior with Daxon, one and a half years of behavior with, uh, with Wyatt, and six years with, with the lab, uh, why, uh, Winston, who's like, oh, whatever. I'm, I've been here. I've seen it all, right? I've seen it all. I've got the T-shirt. I've got the, you know, dog collar. So you want to do that. So it's uh, five seconds, for example, with uh, Winston. Oh, good boy, Winston. And then you let Winston go. Then you call Daxton over. Daxton, right? If, they, if Daxton starts crowding you, no Daxton. That's it. You don't want to yell at him. You don't want to scream at him. He's like, no Daxton. It's not your turn. It's just like you would tell your child. Uh, say, pretend that people are watching you, so you want to be polite about it. No Daxon, then five seconds there. And then Wyatt's turn. Oh, sorry, uh, Winston's turn. No, no, sorry, Wyatt, the, the double Merle. Wyatt's turn, then it's like, okay, now it's Wyatt's turn. So it's, 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 uh, um, it's Winston, then it's, then now it's Daxon's turn. And then you're like, now it's Winston's, uh, now it's, <laughs> damn, now it's the double Merle, now it's Wyatt's turn. You get what I'm saying, right? It, it's in that order. Uh, uh, what, what do I do when I when Dax crowds at, uh, growls at Wyatt? <laughs> so what's happening is uh, Dax is, is getting agitated before he's even reacting. It's happening before you're even noticing it, but if you follow through and you just use your mommy intuition, your parenting intuition, acknowledge him. 
So one of the things I said, I, I, I helped uh, uh, Patty Kim with Jindo Love down in, in Los Angeles when I was down there with uh, uh, one of her fosters that nobody could deal with. Um, it was a reactive uh, Jindo. Um, and the foster had five dogs. I have five dogs here. And sometimes I have six, sometimes, unfortunately, more. Um, so I have five dogs here. Just randomly, randomly, you go up and you touch them. And you touch them in order. So this is for anybody here watching. See Nori, that whole aspect. That's why I say you follow me, you'll follow my codependency aspect of what dogs are like, an overt codependency, humans covert codependency. Is you follow through, you understand where all my thinking has come from and that basis of it. So it's just randomly, and I'll, and I'll so, show you, it shows up proof in human life, okay? Shows up in human life. That's why you don't need treats for this uh, silly stuff here. So I would, you would go up just randomly without even saying, but you want to fix this timing that's going on with Dax and being reactive and growling. Okay, if, if Daxton growing right after that, stop at Daxton. And then you bring Winston or Wyatt to you and spend five seconds. And then when Daxton's like, wait, wait a minute, why are you doing him? I was the one that's growling. You're supposed to give me attention. The kid trying to cause trouble, so you give them attention. Bad, bad, bad behavior for attention. Do you see what I mean? Codependency aspects of that behavior, even an interdependency aspect of it, which he's, uh, he could go that way if you, uh, if you aren't watching him on that sense. So, randomly, what I do the same thing. I go up to them. So you would just basically just randomly, if you're just sitting there doing whatever, you're on the cell phone even, you walk up to Winston. Hi, Winston. And you just touch Winston. You can pet him a little bit for a couple of seconds, no more than two or three seconds because of this type of behavior, the type of activity that's going on, and the type of pat familial be uh, grouping that you have with these three plus your children and how you describe them, the way you've written everything. So you can do three seconds at the most, two to three seconds at the most, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, not one, two, three. Okay, three full seconds. You go up to uh, Winston, hi Winston, three seconds. Then you walk over to Daxton, hi Daxton, three seconds. Then you go over to Wyatt, hi Wyatt, three seconds. And that's it, and then you walk back and do whatever you want. What's gonna end up happening, Dax? Daxton is gonna be like, oh, and he'll start coming over to you like, well, well I want more, I want more. No, no. And you just push them off, push them back. No, mommy's working. Whatever the command you tell them to, to leave you alone, right? Like you'd say to the kids, mom's working, right? And it's just human, regular conversation is what you want to do. Okay. Um, have you had any other comments here? Um, yeah, yeah, I do yell more at Dax because Wyatt can't hear. Yeah, see, okay, when, when he gets crabby with Wyatt, we ask him if he needs to go to bed and he will go in our room to bed. Yeah, so he thinks he's in trouble. Oh, wow, all these things, I didn't see all these messages here. Um, that is exactly the look on his face that he just made. Okay, right. Um, when he gets crabby with Wyatt, we ask him if he needs to go to bed, and we, he, we will go to our room. When he gets crabby with Wyatt, give Wyatt attention, and then call Daxon over, and then you can call uh, Winston over, because you don't want to leave Winston out either. You just call him over. That's all. If he's going to be rude to Wyatt, then White gets the attention, then you take Daxon afterwards, and we'll see that behavior, because it might be a switch that you might have to do. We can work this on as we progress forward here in the next time. Um, okay, so growling, yeah, so the 25 times a day growling and all that, you just have to make sure that you're acknowledging, acknowledging them on an active basis. Just like the kid is running around and you have a hot stove on, and you're making Thanksgiving dinner, and you're like, I've got to keep an eye on the young kids, otherwise they're going to spill something or get burned. Excuse me. That's what you're going to do with Dax, right? The little brother. The little sibling. We put it all, I put this all into human context. When it comes on the psychogenetic aspects and that behavior, it's much, much, much more complicated. But I, I you know, I do try to keep things a bit more um, uh, human. Okay, so then what ends up happening here I, uh, I'm hoping you can help us. Oh, okay. So, you know, the, here's the thing. I, I, I talked about the fact that, you know, go up to each each dog, right? Winston, Wyatt, uh, Winston, Daxton, and then Wyatt, right? Three seconds, three seconds, three seconds, and then you walk back and you just go back to your work. Where does this show up in human behavior? All these things that I came up with, uh, the human analogies come up after the fact. And in other words, I knew this already with the dogs from working with the dogs and my experience with the dogs. But 
I didn't know how to explain it to human beings. And then people were like, I, I have no idea. I had an ex-girlfriend that I was living with at the time. She's like, she was there. She's like, nobody understands what you're talking about because it's, it's just too complicated for them. I'm like, okay. And then I tried bringing it down. And she's like, no one understands what you're talking about. It's too complicated for them. I'm like, okay. And then I bring it down again. Nobody understands. And then I said, what am I supposed to do? And she said, make it like a human, like you're talking about humans to them so they understand or something simple or, or something. And she's like, I don't know, just make it simpler. So then I started using human analogies, which is taking me like a year to get to. Um, and as I do this more and so, so where does this theory that I, it's not even theory, it's a theorem, because it's not even just a theory, it's I prove it every single time. So it's a theorem now, right? Theorem, it's not divergent, it's not speculative, it's provable. Where does this occur in the human aspect of it? And I'd say this because, again, we cohabitate with dogs, canines. Scientists say 10,000 plus years, et cetera. I call it emotional isomorphism. These are two genetic structures sharing an emotional uh, uh, affiliation or, or familiarity on that part. Okay, so where does this behavior that I'm talking about prove itself in human life? Remember when you were a kid and you're doing your homework? And you're just sitting there in the kitchen doing your homework? And suddenly, without any reason at all, your mom walks over and just touches your back shoulder and then walks away. Doesn't say a single word to you. How did you feel? Wow, what an amazing feeling. Right? Your mom didn't talk to you when she touched your shoulder because she knew if she touched you, you'd be like, I don't have mom, hey, mom, mom. So she just touched your shoulder and she just walked on. And that was it. Remember when you were a kid and you were sleeping in your bed? but you heard your mom come in or your dad come in to tuck you in while you're asleep and you pretended that you're still asleep. Why did you pretend that you were still asleep? Because you wanted that feeling of love as they touched you and they covered you with a blanket and you pretended that you're asleep. And then what did you do? You either went, hi mom, after they did it or hi dad after they did it or you just stayed asleep. And those are the two memories, those two events two visceral events, two emotional events, two psychological events that remain in us today. And what's that proof as well? That's part of our humanity, our conscious processing of codependency, affiliation, protection, security, is you're doing it to your own children. The people who are watching this, you do it to your own children. That's where it proves itself every single time. Uh, I just see things a bit faster and then I just try to make it into human terms. Uh, what I want to do is I want to look at the pictures that you have of, um, let's just see here and we'll go to the other screen here. So I want to see the pictures that you have of, um, just go here, of Wyatt and Daxton. I don't know if you have one. I don't, I don't remember if you put a picture of, um, of um, Winston on. So the thing is, I, I infer from uh, from this whole thing is that Winston is a really uh, yeah Winston is a really the lab is a really chill dog, he's pretty cool he he's self sufficient he's all good and all that stuff and he has no issues whatsoever that you think of but the reality is you got to bring him the amount of information, okay so you got to give him uh, you got to give Winston your lab the six year old Winston you got to give him the amount of information and attention and you have to start treating Winston as he's the boss. The big brother big brother Winston middle brother Daxton little brother Wyatt so you're taking care of Wyatt so there's a couple of things I think you put up a video in our in our, in, in our members group and so we're gonna go to this thing here and then we're gonna discuss that part as well uh, Jamie okay so we're gonna go here oh not it that's not it okay which one is it here Okay, I'm looking for help for our two, with our two. Okay, yeah, so this is the one. So I'm just gonna pull up this thing here. Uh, yeah, yeah, Winston is super chill. No pic of Winston. Really, you have pics of all your children and your dogs, but not of Winston? You see what I mean? So that means you kind of somewhat went, okay, this is kind of cool, Winston's on, uh, uh, Winston's on, on automatic pilot. And that's probably the reason why Winston doesn't really join everyone on the couch all the time. I don't want you to feel guilty but that's the reason why Winston isn't feeling part of it. The other aspect that why is Winston uh, and, and Daxton and Wyatt following your husband around? 
because of that behavior your husband is like the kind of person your husband is and all that stuff hey if you're if your husband wants to hire me for some criminal profiling let me know uh, so anyways um, it's because they feel the contentment they feel the reliability when you start doing these things with with these three guys of yours Winston Wyatt, uh, Winston uh, Daxon and Wyatt sorry I got an insect bite here um, Oh, the, the quality here is horrible, I'm sorry. When you start providing that type of affection and control of parenting with them, and you're just touching them, and you're talking to them, and you're stepping in when you're supposed to step in, when Daxon feels like, Mom, you're not doing your job, I gotta do this again, I gotta cook and make the meals, I gotta clean up and I gotta take care of the dogs and my brothers and sisters, I gotta do all this stuff, all my siblings, human siblings, this is not co when you start doing that Daxon will start to follow you around a bit more not for the affection not for the clinginess but for the similarity of safety that Chuck is giving them your husband Chuck uh, fiance Chuck is giving them so you see that will happen you see that you see that adjustment start to happen um, okay so let's just see if we can see the photos here okay so uh, before for those of you playing at home um, you can look at the photos in the, my reactive skittish dangerous dog down training support group. Wyatt was sitting on the couch first, which Wyatt is a double merle, um, partially blind and uh, deaf. Daxon joined him. So you can see the behavior here on the position that's sitting down and all that stuff with Daxon as he's looking onto Winston. It's a frame of picture at time. And here's the other thing is when we're looking at the frame of the picture at the time that you've taken it, you've decided, because I always ask people, send me clear photos of your dog's eyes, face, and body so I get a sense of them. Like I said earlier in the other first vlog, I need to know what you see. And I feel that and I fall in love with your dogs. So here on this part is, this is the particular picture out of 20 different pictures you could have taken and out of all the opportunities that you've taken that you picked this picture because it viscerally spoke to you. That connection, right? The human psychology that goes on there. And so what ends up happening here is it's that picture of, okay, there's Daxon looking over Wyatt. Oh my gosh, it's an adorable picture, right? We see that and there's Wyatt kind of almost like, oh, where's Daxon? So a situation like that is where Daxon's kind of like shutting down a bit actually in, in the sense of, okay, I get to rest now. I don't have to do anything. I'm showing mom I'm doing my job by being with Wyatt. He's still working. Situation like that, when that happens, when Wyatt is laying there and Daxon's there, call Daxon over to you. Random act of kindness. Call Daxon over to you. And just spend a few minutes with him, hanging out with him, and you'll find Daxon will start coming to you instead of going to Wyatt all the time, as long as you're paying attention to Wyatt. So when you're with Daxon, you can acknowledge Wyatt. Hey, Wyatt. Hi. Hi, silly boy. I mean, it's hard to do that, right? So you can do a couple of things. I've worked with deaf and blind dogs before, obviously having, you know, right um there's things that you can do in regards to stomping on the floor while you're touching them so you train them right you've probably got a few of those little things that go on as well but uh bring daxon over and then check in with uh wyatt every once in a while so the next video that we have is they play great together for the most part and they're running around the back yard of the field and they're going back and forth and so you can see that the processing uh, uh vision that um uh, wyatt has right being partially blind you said vision impaired and how he's seeing things like that. And you see how he's looking offset. So he's got stronger vision in his left eye, I, if it's not reversed. But like from what I'm looking at, he's got stronger vision in his left eye. And um, Daxon is purposely playing slow for, for Winston, uh, for, da uh, for Wyatt. So you can see that part. Um, so you, you see that, that, that behavior that Wyatt, uh, that, sorry, that behavior that Daxon, the Harlequin, that behavior that Daxon is doing is a deliberate invitation to engage to Wyatt. And you see his behavior and see how he's dropped down and so forth like that. That's the little brother behavior. You can see where actually Wyatt is trying to be a bit more like, ha, I get to play with you on equal footing. So you want to check that out as well. Um, let me just see here. I did. I wanted to just show Chuck that Dax joined White on his own. Oh, yeah, okay. It did. It did. Sorry, I don't know what you meant by it did. Um, okay, sorry. Um, okay, and then then we have the next picture here. A photo is, um, this is how Daxon protects at the end of the video. Okay, so he's running around. 
I, I did listen to the sound on this. He's running around, then he runs around the garden. So you see, uh, Wyatt has uh, understanding of shape. And you see how he kind of, when he went around towards your fiance, he was looking with more of his left eye at your fiance as well. Um, again, that's why I say your vision on Wyatt is stronger than it is with his right eye. So his left eye is stronger than his right eye. Because you, you see the behavior, how he keeps turning to the left. He's using the left side as you're running around the tree. He's using the left. As he comes towards your husband, or your fiance, he's still looking ahead towards, towards, uh, and then he runs into uh, Daxon on purpose. And it's not a, a protection aspect of it. It's a deliberate engagement. And what Daxon is trying to do is like, all right, let's go right off. Let's, let's be rough and let's have fun. And I know you're talking in the video as well, but I have turned the sound off. Um, okay, so, so there's that part. So uh, you can see it. So he's coming around, he's running around, he comes Wyatt running around, and then Daxon jumps in and to engage and all that stuff. So it's, it's, it's pure play in that part of him being enjoyable. He's not trying to protect. You can see that part here. He's trying to engage. And you can see his behavior is back to the other video again where he's acting like the little brother, the little kid. Even though, even though Daxon is, you know, uh, four or what, two and a half years old, right? Even though Daxon's older, he just doesn't want to be in responsibility anymore, right? It, it's it's quite, a, quite a bit. I did. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to have to look at this real time to see what it means. So then you have the other two, uh, the other photo where Daxon and Wyatt are standing. So uh, uh, Daxon's on the left-hand side of the screen. Wyatt's on the right-hand side of the screen. And you see the position of the body position that's going on. You see how Wyatt is looking straight on towards us in the behavior, right? Because I can't really, I can't actually see his eyes at all because it's too far away of the photo and such a brightness of the photo here. But again, you see how he's using his left eye more. So what you can do to create a, sim, a somewhat balance in his perception is to start working with vision aspect on his right eye first and to his left eye. So that's going to help him create an equality. Not create, it's going to fake the equality of, of vision, right? Because again, even if you've got something that's blurred, right, you're still going to try to make it out with your right eye. Um, we just want to kind of give White a bit more confidence, but uh, we should talk about the part of regards to the, helping him with his deaf, uh, deafness and, and, and feeling stuff. And it's really simple stuff, but I mean, his vision isn't that horrible, uh, thankfully, right? I mean, he's probably got 70% 70, 70 vision, right? Um, yeah, let me know. I, I think he's got about 70% vision, maybe 60%, but I don't think it's that bad, um, right? So he's seeing things in a fuzz, so to speak. But then you look at Daxon's uh, position and his body position in the same photo where the two of them standing there in your beautiful backyard that you guys, your whole neighborhood seems to share. Um, you can see the behavior in the way Daxon's holding himself and the way his eyes and how he's held himself. And this is the picture you've picked, yes, of course, but you see this in motion aspect of this frame of time that's happening with him. He's asking. This is the look that he has. He's asking. It's not submissive. He's asking. And what I mean by asking is that's the kind of behavior of what a little brother does. The little brother's always asking, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I show you that I'm in charge? Can, you sh can I show you that I know what I'm doing? Nighttime vision is bad. Yeah. These disgusting backyard breeders. You know, uh, guys out there, these backyard breeders, they don't pay any taxes on it, which is okay, whatever, right? We all put some cash in our pocket. Okay, I get that. I mean, I, I give receipts to everybody I have to just because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, uh, but these backyard breeders, a lot of times they take this money and they're, a lot of them spend it on drugs. Really, they really do. If you look at some of these posts, especially in these bad breeder, uh, these backyard breeder posts that you see, and you see the where they're living and all that stuff, they're using it to buy drugs, they're using the spend on entertainment, they're using the spend and live large. And they're living large on the on the, the disabilities of dogs. And and these people who are breeding merles together, which you're not supposed to, because it causes dogs to be blind. You see it not just in Great Danes, you see it in Bulldogs, you see it in all these other aspects, right? Because then dogs, you know, the vision is hard to tell that the theories on it in regards to the deafness of the dog is because of the lack of pigmentation in the eardrums. It's disgusting. These freaking monsters. If you're a backyard breeder, please unfriend me. Really. Uh, 
subjecting innocent lives to such cruelty so you can drive an expedition or whatever, a navigator or whatever it is. Just disgusting people. Um, sorry, that's my soapbox. Everyone, everyone who knows me, there's always going to be a soapbox from James. Uh, you guys were waiting. Okay. Um, all right. And then um, this is one where there's Chuck there as he's looking on his phone. And they all want to be close to Chuck, right, and the behavior there. And you see where um, uh, Wyatt, the double Merle, is laying back there on the couch. And, and Chuck is there. It's kind of a stable guy in that part. Um, and then we see Daxon sitting on Chuck and that behavior that's going on. So that behavior is an insecurity aspect of it as well. Insecurity, right? That's somewhat lacking of self-esteem. Not low self-esteem, but somewhat lacking of self-esteem. Yep, White never gets to hear us tell him how we love him and his eyes hurt and he has to wear sunglasses. You know, we can talk about this, uh, uh, Jamie, or, you know, I'll, I'll just do another one. I'll do another post. You can talk about Wyatt specifically, and we'll do one for other people who have deaf and or blind Danes or dogs, bulldogs, you know. That's so that's the rest of the world can kind of hear these things about them. Um, yeah, so uh, he's completely deaf, right? But there's an easy way. There's not an easy way, but there's a bridge way to 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 show Wyatt the words, I love you. And you're going to be like, really? It's that simple? And then you're going to say to yourself, I kind of thought maybe that's what we could do, your intuition. So like I say, I just, I, I just kind of discovered these things because uh, my passion for the dogs is extremely profound. Like I said, I, anybody that knows me, uh, the dogs that I've worked with, my fear is whether or not I'm going to be killed. And it's not an embellishment. And you've seen the newspaper articles and you've seen the, the TV coverage and all that stuff. So none of this, like I don't play the games that all these other people do and like, oh, I want to be famous and all that stuff. I, I, I'll, I'll sacrifice my reputation to go after somebody who's doing dangerous things to dogs. I just, you know what I mean? Like I just, I cannot afford the cruelty that goes on to animals. And all these people playing and towing the line and people like Amber Cotto and Rebecca Ledger and all these sacrificing dogs' lives or making these ambivalent decisions or duplicit decisions of, you know, uh, Dr. Ledger, I've got a report from her from one person who, where she recommends either the dog is rehomed, right? Rehomed or killed. She's making like three, four $400,000 a year. 400 bucks an hour. So it just kills me, right? When we see these things uh, happening, uh, and like I say, I just don't have a lot of patience for people who have no ethics, no morality. In regards. I'm not talking about Dr. Ledger. I'm not talking about Dr. Ro uh, Claudia Richter. I'm not talking about Sheila Begg. I'm not talking about these other aspects. I'm just talking about me, myself, and I. I just have very limited tolerance for that. And people go, why is James such a jerk sometimes to people and all that stuff? Because if you're an a-hole to a dog, I have no reason to have respect for you. And people can say, well, we should teach people. No, you're, you're, you're too old already. You're not going to change. You're never going to change, right? Because you don't want to change. Because if you start defending yourself and start attacking people back, it's like, you know, it's like that, uh, that, that, that idiotic founder of great Danes of our hearts. Uh, I mean, she has some serious uh, addiction issues. And then she dead lashes out at everybody who tries to be friends with her. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, we'll talk about this part here again uh, about dealing with dogs that have deaf or blind aspects of it and um, maybe we'll do it in the next couple of days as well because um, uh, there's a way to just teach him how teach why that you that you love him and he will hear it in a way and you'll be like oh wow maybe again I thought that would make sense your own intuition parenting intuition that's what we are um, okay, so uh, the, the ones with them sitting right in, like I said, is, uh, you know, Winston's not going to be able to sit on there because there's no room on the couch with Chuck or with, uh, with Wyatt and um, uh, with uh, Wyatt and Daxon. Um, when Winston is off on his own, because it hurts me to see that he's not in any of these photos just because you're sending them about these two, right? But, I mean, it hurts me when I see this photo of them sitting down uh, with Chuck uh, is because – then I go, well, where's the other dog, right? You know, I have, like, I rent this old house, and I have, you know, it's a two-bedroom old house and all that stuff, and there's the bedroom, and then uh, one of my dogs will go off by themselves and lay in there all the time. And so what I've done is I started to actually block it off, 
so that they, I don't close the door, I just put something in front of it so they can't get through. And then he ends up joining the rest of us, or rest me and, and all the other dogs here in the same area. And then he feels included. Because if he's out off in the room by himself, he, he starts uh, getting, he, he, he's alone, right? He withdraws. So it's like the child that's at the birthday party and they kind of get left out and then you just see them in the corner just kind of, you know, coloring by themselves. You're like, oh, don't you, and you, what does your heart do? Your heart's like, oh my gosh, my, my son is, 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 is feeling left out. And what do you do? You end up sitting with your son for a few minutes and talking, getting him happy again. And then what do you say? Okay, let's go join everybody now. And he's like, yeah, right? And he's happy. Low self-esteem, insecurity, not codependency, none of these other aspects of it. So the same thing when it comes to Winston as well. Bring Winston in. If he's not able to join in the group, then you or Chuck take time with Winston. So, um, so uh, Winston's on the couch with me. They all, they all three alternate. He's never alone. Okay. Um, you know, oh, gosh, all three of them do join Chuck at times. Okay. So then, just a photo. Um, just because uh, when we're when I was reading it, I didn't know. There was no mention of Winston's name, so I kind of thought, okay, there's a bit of a, a – uh, I know you're trying to talk about the two Danes and all that stuff. Um, when it comes to the, the alternating and all that stuff, um, if you're going to alternate, the humans alternate. So what I mean by that is if that's the case that's going on, if Winston's hanging out with you – and then Chuck is hanging out with the other guys and all that stuff. Okay. Um, then what you would do is say, for example, Chuck's on the couch with uh, Wyatt and, and uh, Daxon, and then you're with Winston on the other couch. Uh, and then you get up and you just trade places. So there's a couple things there, right? It, it shows us there's a bit of a difference, a shift in, in the care, but it also shows the dogs that, they get an opportunity to reconnect with each one of you on a more intimate level again, that you're making the effort to interrupt their behavior versus you calling them over and they're making the, the impetus to walk over due to your, your request to do so. So you get up and you move around for them. And same with Chuck. I mean, it might be hard for Chuck because it looks like he's on his cell phone. So um, um, that's what I would do is the humans get up and switch around and do that for a while. Same thing like the little brother, same thing like you not – calling out the riot act, but you being in control of things, of the kids running in and out transient, you're showing Daxton that you're doing the job that Daxton feels like he's supposed to do because you're not doing it. So I would just step in that way and just do that interruption in that behavior of you humans physically switching places. And the dogs will be like, what are, we, what are you doing? What are you doing? And as you do it more often, they'll be like, okay, mom, mom and dad are switching places again. It's the same thing like when you are, you know, you, uh, you, uh, Chuck's got one, one child and you've got the, uh, another child and you're walking and you're like, okay, yeah, time to switch, right? You know, okay, you take them over there, right? We spend an hour here each and then you, you switch over into that. Um, who has a broken leg from playing soccer? Uh, was it Winston, Daxon, or um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Wyatt? Or Chuck? I, I know, I'm just kidding. Um, well, you know what? It might be time to take Chuck to the vet. I don't know. So, um, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, with that part with with Chuck, then then you know what you can do. You can, uh, if you want to, you can swish all onto the same thing and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, we just uh, so it's a little bit difficult in that part. Okay. So you know maybe when Chuck is finally um, back up on his feet again, then you you guys can do that. Um, but go up to Winston three seconds, go up to Dax in three seconds, go up to uh, Wyatt three seconds, and then just sit back down. And if Chuck can do so as well, then that'd be good, but I know he, he can't really. And when you do go up to them, you don't have to say anything other than when you go up to them randomly. You just walk up to them, give them that, and then it'll just reinforce the fact that they're being not watched, but they're being taken care of equally. And they're seeing each other being taken care of equally, and they're both all three of them understanding the time frame that they're being uh, spent with. Like I talked about in one of my earlier broadcasts about dogs processing time. How do dogs process time? Right? People are like, oh, well, they have a sense of time, but we don't really know. Dogs process time through abstract memory, like photos 
you know the old slideshow projectors and the the frames of each photo or in that and they go ch -ch -ch -ch, and they go and they, they advance they advance they advance but each single frame even though they're this far apart in the in the machine one picture could have been taken 10 years ago and the other picture could have been taken five minutes ago so it, 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 we're talking about the impression of it right because of course you're not going to be able to have that type of long-term memory because they like the sophisticated uh uh, cognitive uh, processing on it, right, in the the primal aspect of right, you know that 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 part of the stem of the brain where the primitive aspect of instinct works and all that. They don't understand that, but what I mean is, they understand through sections. That's why your dog will come up to you while you're eating and just stand there for an hour. They're not processing time as per se. They're processing when you will give them the treat. Abstract memory. Blah, 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 right? There, it, it, like I say, so this stuff is so freaking simple. Um, it's just, it's really freaking simple. It, it's complicated and all that stuff, as I talked about, but again, it's just, you know, slivers, blah, 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 anyways. Um, so you go up to Daxton, uh, I'm sorry, you go up to Winston, Daxton, and then uh, Wyatt. And don't forget Chuck, too. You want to touch Chuck, too, for three seconds. Just touch him on the top of the head and say, good boy. Uh, <laughs> so three seconds. And then after that, then um, you, you make sure the kid's running in and out of the home. Slow down. Thank you, Daxton. Slow down. You want to make sure that you're in charge. You're the hall monitor, right? The one that everyone loves, not hates, but loves. So you do that as well in that part of it. Uh, the behavior of them running around and all that stuff is Daxton's the one able to control things down, and he's always on the clock trying to take care of everybody, even though he wants to be the little brother. And... Um, you know, that aspect of just a little bit of insecurity and all that stuff. You just want to check in with Dax and say, thank you, Daxon. Good job. And every once in a while, you want to call Daxon over and just spend a few seconds with him and let Daxon know that you're acknowledging his excellent behavior while taking care of his big brother or little brother, I mean. Um, so you want to, you want to do that, right? He's acting like the little brother when he should be the big brother. And the big brother, as you know, you know, I come from a family of eight, the big brothers. They don't have to do anything, right? Because they, they're like, okay, you do this, you do that, right? Mm, you do whatever you do, right? Mm, I'm in charge. So, again, it comes to not necessarily just a seniority, but it's also that aspect, and it goes back to my uh, conviction that it is um, Daxon so operating as a little brother that is obligated to do more so than he needs to. It's a, it's a straightforward aspect of the reactivity and all that stuff when it comes to the other kids and everything. Like I say, you might want to put them all in the room together, all three of them, or start practicing putting one in the room uh, away, and then you're checking in with them and, and all that. All right, I have that here too as well. I have one dog who is um, who will eat anything and everything if it's left around. So when I leave, I have to put him in the, in the bedroom, my bedroom, and then, excuse me, and then I put him with another dog. Um, I'll switch them around every once in a while, but the one dog, uh, this one dog, I have to put him in the room, otherwise he will eat everything. Um, and then he gets anxiety issues and so forth like that. So, or, or you know, because otherwise he's running around, chewing everything up and eating garbage out of the garbage can, right? It just happens, um, you know. So, yeah, so do those things. If you have any other questions, Jamie, please let me know. Uh, I will be ending this off now uh, soon. In the, in the next few seconds, and um, if you have any questions, that's what I'm try to figure out how to switch this out. Um, okay, so I'll be ending this, and uh, like I said, if you have any other questions, we can do that. I'll put some stuff together about uh, about um, uh, Wyatt, and then we'll do uh, a full uh, hour and hour and a half in regards to just addressing some of the issues that you observed about Wyatt, about him being blind and deaf. And then we will uh, then we'll work on how a few things you can do. I think I don't know. Do you know Sally Langford, uh, who's out in Australia or whatever? Right, she had Nanook and a few other uh, Danes, and I think even Heather Moon, who unfriended me after this whole thing that happened with the Great Danes of Our Hearts. Uh, Heather Moon, I helped her with her Dane, the the deaf and blind one that she had as well. Um, so there's a few things that we can do to help give a bit more strength, but because why it's not severely vision impaired, right? Um, we can do some basic stuff on that. And the simplest thing is letting him know how, how much you love him. And it's, you're just going to go, I'm doing it already. Or I thought, so I'm not going to tell you anything magical at all. Just, 
I, I might see it a different way, but you'll see that and you'll be like, wow, this is just what I thought it was. My whole mandate in my life is to really focus on empowering people to be able to achieve these little intuitive things about each other and about ourselves, what we see. It's in, it, our intuition comes from evolution. I believe in God, uh, but it comes from evolution in the sense of it, because, you know, with, with that whole thing, I'm not going to go on the religious side because I know it offends some people, so I'm just keeping myself separate here. But it's, evolution is our instinct, our desire to take care of each other, our desire to procreate, our desire to follow love, which is a narcissistic uh, 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 aspect of our survival trait, which is somewhat Darwinian in that sense of it, but it's much more visceral. Um, but we can do these things. You know, like I was saying earlier, as well as I've, I've been in the situations where I'm literally extremely freaking scared and uh, I'm panicking inside as a dog who comes up to my chest, just the top of his head comes up to my chest and I'm five foot 11. And I, and I am literally wondering if I can get to my cell phone to phone 911 and whether or not I'm gonna bleed out before they come up. And it's like, okay, well, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. But then are they gonna kill my dogs, right? Even the ones that I'm rehabbing, it's not their fault. It's other human beings fault. So I've gone through these aspects on repeated basis and it saddens me because these dogs become victims from, yeah, it, it really does. So, um, tune in tomorrow. I, I want to thank everybody so much for for bearing with me for these two different vlogs. We're now like over two hours again and two separate things. Rita in Norway, you must be happy about that. You're like, go as long as you want, uh, you know. Um, uh, we'll, we'll do this tomorrow. And we'll continue to teach the world how to change the world for dogs, right? When we change the way we treat our dogs, our dogs change too. All right. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your life. Talk soon. Okay.